A few years ago, I was contacted by our next speaker because he wanted to establish a scholarship at Western. Uh, we have stayed in touch over the years, and he has always had wonderful things to say about Western, and I was very impressed by his dedication to Western. Uh, earlier this year, he again contacted me as he wanted to initiate payroll deduction to make sure that his scholarship was funded each and every year. He again had some very genuine remarks to make uh, about Western and his time at Western and how Western prepared him for life after graduation. I could not think of a more appropriate person to ask to speak tonight. Uh, he just completed his third deployment overseas representing his country and will again be deployed for a fourth time early next year. Please join me in welcoming Major Eric Archer back to Western Illinois University. Good evening, Dr. Goldfarb, uh, Mrs. Goldfarb, distinguished guests. Uh, let me first say I, am, uh, I count myself as tremendously proud to be part of you in this organization tonight. Um, it is a high honor for me to be here with you, and I'm thankful for both the opportunity and the generosity tonight and throughout my four years at, at Western. I am a WIU alum, and I was asked to take a moment to share how the purple and gold of WIU are woven throughout the tapestry of my life. Uh, interestingly, putting my thoughts to paper has been a challenge. Uh, having written for The Courier as an editor, uh, having been an army trained in briefing techniques, I should have to force myself to stop writing about all my experiences at Western, but it's been difficult, and I think I know why. Uh, running with the cadets this morning uh, as dawn slowly broke, walking through the Union earlier today, and actually tingling with excitement as I bought a Western uh, hooded sweatshirt, uh, and reminiscing as I visited the old hangouts in the square, I realize that writing about Western is much like writing about home. It's more of a story and of a feel rather than a linear arrangement of facts. So it's harder to translate into words, but with your permission, I'll try. Uh, to most, college is a life-altering experience, but it shapes and molds, I think, each one of us a little differently. For some, it's an academic means to obtain work, career, uh, and stability. Others seek athletic achievements, and still others, like me, stand wide-eyed, head raising up to encompass the immense residence hall in front of us, essentially a blank slate, without the understanding of the experience that awaits. Uh, it was with trepidation and uncertainty that I arrived at Henninger Hall on a January morning of 1998. And I think we all remember that moment, pulling the few worldly possessions that somebody at that station in life has accrued, and if I remember correctly, it's mostly posters and a phone. Uh, <laughs> and then walking away from the life before and with the simple pushion of an elevator door close button beginning a new phase of life. A definitive and clear transition to be sure. Immediately greeted by my RA, I felt the rush of this new experience and curiosity about school and what it offered. Uh, within days of semester starting, I attended my first ROTC class. I knew I wanted to be a soldier after playing high school football and wrestling for the first time during my senior year. Uh, the sense of team and commonality of purpose uh, was electrifying and I knew the Army could provide me that same bond forged through collective pain, effort, and achievement. Uh, within, the first, uh, within, the first week of, uh, of, within the first week of arriving at Western, we had our first ROTC physical training run. Being January and being Midwesterners, we didn't like the Arctic temperatures, winds, and ice deter us. Uh, we ran outside and I hopped into a PT formation along with about 20 of, of my fellow cadets. The run took us through the campus and the ice proved to be a worthy adversary. Uh, routinely slipping, the fellow cadet behind me uh, kept catching me whenever I slipped. And thinking that she probably saved me from stitches by going up to the steps of the Union, I walked home from PT promising I'd thank her pre for preventing me a trip to Bew. Uh, the next day at PT, I saw her actually striding towards me. And bumbling as kids of that age and opposite sex confidence level do, we both, <laughs> we both blurted out our thoughts at the same time. In the midst of me trying to thank her for catching me, she was apologizing for tripping me throughout the run. <laughs> the ice broken, she introduced herself as Beth, and I learned that she lived in Bayless Hall, which was perfect because I lived in Henninger Hall. Uh, this was the day I first talked to my now wife and mother of my two children. Uh, we walked to PT every morning, uh, together traversing Culot to Simpkins and then to Horbin, and throughout my four years at Western and ever since, Beth and I have been hopelessly in love. So Western gave me more than an education, it gave me a wife. From that day where I met the incredible girl who would ultimately become my wife, ROTC was the prism through which I viewed everything. Uh, through Western's ROTC program and Colonel Larry Pickett in particular, I learned the complicated art of military leadership. Uh, forged in classroom discussions, field training exercises, and obstacles tackled with my peers, uh, 
the, this foundation has proven over the most challenge, challenging and military conditions to have been expertly constructed. I trust in the education my instructors imparted upon us through great personal effort, and therefore I trust myself. Western gave me more than an education, it gave me confidence. Hoping to gain some further insights on leadership, I applied to be an RA at Henninger Hall. Over two years of time, working with such professionals at UHDS as John Bierenbaum, my fellow RAs and I learned life lessons while walking the residence halls at night and with our informal resident interactions. I also learned the impossible art of boat making and I think ours sunk in record time. <laughs> These two years were invaluable, and my years of freshman year experience floor RA in particular confirmed in me my desire to help, guide, and assist others. This experience taught me patience, respect for different cultures and viewpoints. The Army can tend to attract people of similar persuasions, and the importance of people working with people to accomplish a goal. I distinctly remember going with my fellow RAs to a leadership reaction course that we frequently visited as ROTC cadets. In ROTC, we designate a person to be in charge. He or she develops a plan, and we execute their intent. Simple, clear, and precise. We as RAs went to the course, we collectively discussed the options for no less than 40 minutes, had three or four primary leaders, twice as many uh, folks offering their perspectives, and solved the obstacle in just under a day. <laughs> Military precision it wasn't, but it helped me to understand and respect other perspectives and approaches that made me a better person. Western gave me more than an education, it gave me humility and compassion. The person I am today, Army Major, husband and father, was created here in these halls, here on this campus. The Army Major talking to a distraught soldier was created as an RA helping a resident through family issues. The successful communicator was created as an editor for The Courier. The husband met his wife on a PT run the first day of ROTC. I owe a debt to this institution that can never be repaid, but it is a debt that I am supremely thankful to carry. I came to WIU as a boy without direction and left a confident leader of men engaged to a beautiful fellow Leatherneck. To everyone in this room who makes this institution what it is, thank you, sincerely and from the bottom of my heart for creating this amazing paintbrush with which students like me can take and transform a blank canvas into a thriving work of art. The last thought I'll leave you with is this. I came to Western having emerged with some, from some difficult times and my grades appropriately suffered. A strong showing alone on the ACT allowed me to attend WIU and experience all the things I just explained and become the man and father I am now. I'm not addressing you tonight as the prototypical scholar. I'm a student who, partnering with the university, overcame obstacles to succeed. So whether it be a student in your class who seems distracted and isn't performing to his or her potential, or whether setting the parameters of a particular scholarship, don't invest solely in the sure thing. Oftentimes, investments with risk offer the highest rewards. Thank you for helping me and my family reach mine. What I did not mention to you when I introduced Eric uh, was that when he contacted me earlier this year to begin funding a scholarship through payroll deduction, uh, was that he mentioned it might take some time to get this done. When I asked uh, why, uh, he said he was currently serving his country in Afghanistan at the time and was contacting me through email to do so. Um, I still remember looking at that email and thinking, wow, he's in Afghanistan and he's thinking about funding a scholarship at Western. It hit home pretty fast and hard for me. A uh, fellow alum serving overseas in a dangerous situation with wife and children at home, and yet he took the time to remember Western and the thoughtfulness to make sure that the scholarship he started would always be funded. And I thank you so much for that, Eric.